giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.striker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good, good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Tonight, we have the pleasure of hosting two guests from Team 1023, the Bedford Express out of Temperance. 1023 was winners of the first in Michigan Jackson District this season and came in at number 36 on the final FRC Top 25 and fourth in the final first in Michigan rankings from the FRC Top 25 voting. Reporting for first updates now, I'm Nick Jr. And I am PJ, and on top of winning the district, you have to remember Bedford did win the Chairman's Award as well at Jackson, their first Chairman's win since 2015. Yeah, also, I didn't mean to forget that. So as I said <laughs> earlier, uh, we do have two guests from Team Temp 23 joining us tonight, so we will have them introduce themselves. Jared, let's start with you. Hi, I'm Jared. I'm one of the captains of 1023. And Brendan? Hi, I'm, Brendan. Uh, I'm Brendan. I'm the chassis driver, and I kind of help out everywhere. Awesome. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, but before we move on, we do have a giveaway tonight. Tyler, could you talk about tonight's giveaway? Yeah, we have our friends from Animark are back once again, staying, uh, making sure they're staying strong. Uh, big shout out to our Animark friends. Uh, I know a lot of them are working from home and trying to get stuff done, but uh, Animark is still giving away one of their awesome goats. You can't even buy this right now, guys. So who doesn't want an Animark goat, right? We even have an email that looks like it, but it's not a hashtag copyright. So, uh, so with that, <laughs> with that said, if you're interested in winning this, uh, we'll be uh, giving this away a little bit later on. Just a reminder, all of our suppliers are, are very delayed uh, right now in getting stuff out. So please be patient with them, but be happy that they're still willing to give stuff out. We'll have a keyword to give away later on during the show. And don't forget, subs get five times luck to win. So good luck, everybody. Enjoy Infimidation. Yeah, thanks again, Tyler, and thanks to our friends at Andy Mark. So uh, now let's go ahead and get a shallow look into Team 1023 and the robot from this year. Um, I know that overall 1023 has been a fairly strong team here in the state of Michigan. Um, doing a little bit of Blue Alliance research earlier, 22 blue banners between chairmans and uh, winning events uh, for 1023 in their history. Um, state champions in 2015, also making it to Einstein in 2015. Uh, continuing that success then to now so uh, far. So congratulations for that. Uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into some robot discussion. Um, can you guys uh, go ahead and start me a little bit uh, with about your Swerve drivetrain? Yeah. Um, so Swerve drivetrain, um, obviously, it doesn't... Okay, so we decided to go with Swerve drivetrain this year, um, but we also decided to go with the turret, and that was kind of something that we talked about um, at the beginning is we wanted to be able to uh, be able to drive at any anywhere any direction on the field at any time and we that was kind of like one of our goals um, and then with the turret we wanted to be able to shoot everywhere as well at the same time um, so swerve drive train while it's more expensive than a traditional uh, you know tank drive train uh, definitely I think helped this year um, and yeah this was your yeah. si Second year doing Swerve, right? Yeah, yeah we started last year. Last year we, year. Worked, uh, last year we went yeah. with the Mark One design, but this year we made the switch to the Mark Twos, and it has much better wheels. Uh, the treads last way longer, and it's much faster. Yeah, so like coming from a driver, obviously, Brendan, um, do you? I don't know. Have you driven um, anything else besides Swerve in a competition before? Or has it only been Swerve? No, actually, even in FTC, we had a holonomic drivetrain. So okay. I've been raised around privileged drivetrains my entire life. Right. Yeah, for sure. So um, obviously, um, you know, a little bit from what I've seen from Jackson, um, 
you guys have definitely been one of the more quicker teams on the field. So um, I know you were, uh, Jared briefly talked about like the fully adjustable turret and stuff. So um, like when you guys were going into the design process and, you know, we got to digest infinite recharge, um, what made you kind of want to go the route to have Swerve and the fully adjustable turret um, and that kind of thing. So. So when we were started prototyping our shooter, um, our first goal was just, you know, getting the balls in the goal. Um, scoring power cells in the high goal. Um, and then once we got that down, we started looking at how can we do this better? Um, and the next step for us was a turret and an adjustable hood. Um, and that works really well with our swerve drive because we don't actually have to turn the robot. We can just turn our turret um, regardless of where the, the robot's facing at the given time. Yeah, absolutely. PJ, you got anything to add? Yeah, I would say what, uh, just because one thing I noticed that sort of goes, ties in with the swerve and the, the whole turret is that you have one of the more impressive autonomouses that I've seen in Michigan this year um, between going to, you know, the far side, your opponent's trench for those two, uh, driving along the edge of the center square, whatever it's called. Um, so, like, what, how, how long did it take you guys to, like, just get all that code done and, like, like, is that a huge focus of your team was just, like, getting that code and Not practice actually. and all that? Oh, most yeah. of our time, most of the time we actually spent uh, tuning in the turret, and every time there was any mechanical change at all, we had to go back and retune the turret. But as far as the actual programming of the autonomous, our programmer had an actual, uh, he, the program knew exactly where it was on the field. So it was pretty much go there, go there, go there, go there. And it knew, and if it ever hit another robot, uh, which it did actually in a qualification match, uh, it corrects itself. So we never had too much issue actually programming the autonomous. Oh, yeah, so you do have correction on the fly then with that. That makes sense. Yeah, that's definitely um, one of the benefits of having the turret. Um, I know, like, uh, for example, my team um, also did a fully um, adjustable turret. And then, the, you know, the advantage in autonomous that it gives you um, is enough for it right there. So... Um, kind of just watching uh, what, what's on the stream right now, one of your guys' practice matches that's going on. Um, I believe that you guys said this was the first run of you guys actually practicing? Yeah, this was actually uh, the first time the whole thing came together. So this is with, like, wow. no turret tuning, no nothing at all. That's uh, this is back when, that's pretty yeah, insane. This is back when we had on it, too. Wow. So a lot of chances were happening, and there's still a lot of bugs we needed to fix. Right, for sure. I mean, yeah, obviously, uh, more time you get on it, um, it definitely assists you. So uh, one other question that I have, um, you know, going into this season, um, did, did you guys change anything specifically um, with not having a bag day? Or did you guys kind of keep the, the same consistency and whatnot uh, with your schedule? I don't know if uh, you, one of you guys wants to talk about that. but Yeah, no, um, our goal was to act like there was a bag day. Um, so we can give, you know, the drivers uh, more time to practice. And I think that really benefited us this year, um, keeping to that old schedule of six weeks of build season, um, because uh, we, we definitely got the driver practice in, and that definitely benefited us in the competition that we went to. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so kind of moving forward, uh, we're going to move over down the list. Um, I you, In the list that you guys sent me, you had listed – um, polycord conveyor indexer. So um, what kind of got you guys to that point? And uh, was, did you originally have something else different, a, a different uh, index design? And uh, how did you eventually get to the polycord one? So we started with poly belt um, and that, you know, we, re we really liked how it performed, but it kept uh, slipping off the pulleys that we had. Um, and we had polycord that we used in 2012, and we figured we had that extra lying around the center, so we tried that, and that worked so much better than the belt. It was um, it's kind of like night and day. Um, and later we found out that because the tension of uh, the, the cords was a bit loose, it actually slipped a little bit, which allowed uh, us to programmatically index balls into our turret or into our tower, um, which saved us a lot of time indexing balls in that competition. Okay, so when it comes in the intake, does it just kind of go into like sort of like a hopper almost and then it indexes from there or how does that exactly work? Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually a uh, Lexan side plates so it all just kind of funnels right into the bottom right there. We okay. decided to do that instead of the vectored intake wheels. 
Yeah, so um, another thing, like you guys said, gravity uh, fed index versus vectored intake wheels. Um, what did you guys notice? I mean, I'm assuming, did you guys try any of the vectored intake wheels? And if you did, uh, what kind of made you stray away from them and that kind of thing? Well, we weren't actually able to buy the nice ones, <laughs> and we had to make our own. <laughs> uh, yeah. You and along with the rest of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the wheels on the inside would pop out, and the pins weren't, weren't long enough. We made modifications to them, but we still found it better just to have that gravity fed. Okay. Yeah, for sure. PJ, anything else to add? Yeah, just this sort of goes along. Probably you've sort of touched on it with sort of your index there, but what made you go tall rather than short? So um, the first couple of days or first like week of the season, we were really scared about going swerve drive and then having to go over the, the bumps in the middle of the field. Uh, we were kind of scared with uh, the wear and tear on the swerve drives, like if we we're going to have to be fixing that um, a lot at competition. Um, and then 2910 actually released a video of them like kind of going over it crazy, like full speed spinning over it. Um, and that kind of alleviated a lot of the doubts we had about whether the system would hold up or not. Um, so at that point, we figured it's better to go tall and have to work less on a shooter than it is to go short and um, be able to go under the trench. Yeah, and my out. view of that was also uh, most of the most of the robots, in my opinion, I thought we're going to try to be under the trench because it almost seemed like it was necessary. So us being able to go through the kind of point and stay cycling through there would keep us out of the way yeah. of our lives. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm I'm outnumbered here as the one the one short robot here in yep. the call. So <laughs> I'm team curious. call, Bob, baby. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I'm just always yeah. curious why people decided it. Um, so then I think what we're gonna pause right now, and we're gonna give um, Tyler a chance to speak on one of our great great supporters here on Fun, a great company here in Michigan, and uh, Tyler. Why don't you tell us about Stryker a little bit? Yeah, uh, guys, you've been here about Stryker for a while now, but something I really want to bring up that I think is a little special here is that uh, Stryker is a leading medical manufacturer uh, in the world. And something to talk about is not not just their careers and who they're hiring and that they, they want to hire people in first, but you want to talk about the impact that they're having, you know, going on with everything going on right now. Uh, you know, Stryker equipment is in, you know, virtually every hospital uh, in the United States. You can find it everywhere. Uh, so I just want to give a big thanks, a big shout out to them for a company that's continually working uh, to try to help solve the problems that are going on uh, in the world right now. And, uh, you know, don't mean to be too, uh, you know, sobering about something like this, but they really are leading the way and, and they really are doing really, really cool stuff uh, with that. So, you know, go check them out if you get an opportunity. Say thanks to Stryker uh, for what they're doing. And, of course, everybody else who's, uh, you know, not just Stryker, but everybody else who's, who's really uh, – giving uh during this time is super important to that so thank you to striker for being there uh for teams thank you to striker for being there uh for uh the medical needs that are out there right now so that's my shout out to them today yeah and then um with that i think we're gonna start the drawing for our giveaway um and so the keyword for that is going to be where is it? Found it. Okay. It's, <laughs> it's hashtag goat dash 100. Uh, Tyler just put it in chat so you can see it. Um, so go ahead and spam that in chat. We'll be drawn for that uh, in a little bit after we have a few more questions for our gracious guest from Bedford. So um, what we wanted to talk about next was I know in the uh, – when we were you know doing some talking before, you guys mentioned what are your – big challenges this year involved the bill of materials and like motor usage. So like what, what about that was a challenge? So historically our team's main constraint in the build season uh, is usually weight. Um, usually we build heavy tanks, robots, and um, that's kind of the big, big issue with our build season this year. We had to switch. We switched that problem for another problem, which is the bill of materials. We were over budget most of the season and we had to put a lot of long hours into doing like changes to the bomb and changes to subsystems uh to get under that five thousand dollar price yeah that's one thing i know about swerve is it can get expensive <laughs> along with everything else it's very yeah swerve ended up being over half of our budget this year well i mean essentially it's it's just over half right so i mean at that point you know how to you know how to make you know three to four possible subsystems off 
half a bomb when usually you know your drivetrain yeah. um at least for 4130 um only tends to be about you know 15 to 1800 dollars of our bomb so i can't imagine it being you know 2800 dollars and then you know you having to go through and trying to do it kind of that way so um i know you also put in here um you guys actually use hatch panels uh to save on the bomb i don't know if you kind of want to talk about that a little bit yeah no um we ended up cutting out, uh, we had 3 16 Lexan on the robot in a couple different places, and that happened to be what the hatch panels were made out of, and they're on sale for $4.99, um, so kind of like everything lined up so that we were able to uh, cut out like a $100 sheet of uh, Lexan from our bomb because we used free uh, hatch panels. <laughs> got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah, oh, I, mean, yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> I, I, I see your intake was only uh, forty five dollars, I guess, according to Shelby in chat. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the cheapest subsystem by far. <laughs> so um, I know we've kind of talked about you know the sort of drive and the indexer. Um, let's kind of dive into the, the shooter and um, what kind of rendition. Did you guys have of that? Uh, we got about five minutes left, so let's kind of wrap it up with the shooter and kind of do that. So. Yeah, so like, where was your main inspiration you pulled for this shooter? So we pulled heavily from uh, Team 319. Uh, be, they released their CAD, and we pretty much copied that um, and made some improvements to it. And um, that, that definitely got us a good starting point. Um, we made some improvements to that and ended up sending it back to them. Um, and that helped them a lot, too, um, I think is what they said <laughs> um but that was kind of like where we started um and we, we had to adjust some compression uh because the compression wasn't uh where we liked it um and we also changed it from a four inch to a six inch because we have a sponsor that uh, made us uh some nice really nice six inch wheels yeah and then um and then you guys said and then uh just beyond the shooter then the climber you said was pulled from the the every bot a lot uh yeah that was that was kind of the basic inspiration um we have uh this year we started a uh, eighth grade team and they built an everybot climber um so getting into week five we were we, did, we still didn't have a climber at like week five week six and we we're like okay we really need to build a climber right they, so yeah our eighth grade team climbed before we did well so yeah so brendan what what does that mean that's three teams now you guys have at bedford right you got 10 23 and then I can't remember the. Forgive me, the second one. And then you also have the eighth grade team too. Then right? Oh, original. Oh, the JV, we don't have the JV team anymore. Oh, you don't. So it's just, it's just ten twenty three and then the eighth grade team. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Okay. Bed, Bedford Junior was a twenty eighteen experiment. I think. I don't think. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What team members your eighth grade team? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody in chat probably knows. <laughs> Where's Shelby when you it's need 35, her? 35 something. Oh, it's a 35 team. No, it's 84-23. Oh, 84. Oh, yeah. where did I get 35? <laughs> I don't know. I, th I, don't I think of speed. Is it the other temperance no, team? Oh, th yeah. 30, yeah. 42. <laughs> That's what it was. Right, I got it. <laughs> so, um... We're going to kind of wrap it up here. Um, any uh, any plugs you guys kind of want to add? Anything about um, your robot and stuff you might have changed uh, before you went to your next competition after Jackson? Uh, one of the thing we, one of the things we actually were really excited to add before we went to uh, Woodhaven was our programmer, Joey, was working on uh, a sort of proactive tracking kind of thing. So say, for instance, we're strafing left, the program would know where you are, where the target is, and aim a little bit more to the right so that we could make the three point shot even more so that we legitimately would not have any limitations when out there with the swerve, with the turret and the proactive tracking. Cause why not? More degrees of freedom yeah. is better. Right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, and, then I, and then I know something else that Bedford's doing. I know um, we were talking about it before that, um, that Bedford is putting, is partnering with team neutrino out of Iowa, I believe to host a chairman's exchange via zoom on April 8th and April 15th from 7 to 9 Eastern time. They uh, tweeted about it earlier today. So their information is all on Twitter, um, which I think is FRC 1023. But I um, just wanted to, I saw that today. So I figured I'd throw it out there because I knew we'd be talking about it. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks again for that. And uh, thanks to our friends from uh, 1023. So before we go, let's go ahead and draw for that giveaway. Tyler, can we go ahead and draw for the GOAT? Yep, hashtag GOAT-100 uh, was the keyword. And the winner is going to be Alex Richards, 48. Congratulations. Apparently it's a, it's a fun crew night to win tonight. Uh, but congratulations, Alex. Uh, just make sure you reach out to me once again. Don't forget, guys, uh, thank, please thank a supplier today uh, who is still stepping up to do giveaways. Uh, even though they might be delayed, uh, still pretty awesome that uh, so many of them are saying, hey, you know what? We still want to support. Uh, we still love these teams. And we still want to make sure that, that we can uh, help do this. So thanks to Annie Mark and thanks to everybody else uh, for their support for that. And congrats to Alex Richards. Yeah, just like Tyler said, thanks to our uh, friends, Danny Mark, and all of our suppliers who were able to provide giveaways during this rough time. So uh, that's all we have for tonight. Uh, thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Fun needs your help to stay live, loud, and independent. Please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know that this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. On behalf of myself, our guests Jared and Brendan from 1023, and our producer Tyler, I'd like to thank you in for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. The next show is We the North Shallow Dive with Team 1720 fix it Gears. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.